Caught a few decent fish. Braden got his first decent one out of the racks. Mm. Got a nice big flathead on the 6.2 bait junkie minnow. That flathead was... Oh. <laughs> oh. That was good fun. That I was like, like the pinnacle. I still can't believe how big that thing was. So, it was a good day. Cool. Yeah. Try to drop pedal and get that shit in the kayak. <laughs> Those will be my two Rodneys of attack today. These are Tom's rods, so if anything happens to them, not my rod, not my problem, that's what I say. Uh, I'll throw a whiskey critter. No, you can throw a whiskey critter. Mm -hmm. I'll okay. throw a grub. Look, I'm, I'll throw whatever gets bit. Actually, I'm going to use the 6, uh, 610, 610 LFS. That'll be mine. This is like hella risky rack fishing, but it's fun. G'day everyone, Braden Shu here from Dar Australia. I'm at Foster here with Chris Hickson, local legend. <laughs> um, we're here, uh, here at Foster, this is just the afternoon. Got planned for a really big day tomorrow on the water. Um, mostly targeting brim, there might be some flatties involved, some dewies, big tide, so we'll just see what, uh, where we get pushed around and stuff like that, but mainly focusing on bait junkies. So we've got the brand new jig heads, they just hit the stores. Um, this here, little 120th on a risky critter, thrown in around the racks here. Um, we're just going to see what we can pull out pretty much. We've had a few bigger bites this afternoon, haven't connected, but we haven't got busted off either. So yeah, I mean, we're doing uh, pretty good. We we're doing lost. pretty good. So, um, but yeah, really looking forward to this. We're going to put these through the paces here and um, see how many bust offs we get, but also see how many big blue nose we pull out as well. So uh, it should be a pretty good trip. Tomorrow we're going to hit it really hard. We've done a little bit of recon mission here, seeing what's up, and uh, it's looking pretty good. Yeah, I'm super keen to give the. Super keen to give the bait junker jig heads a run in the racks full on. I've had them for a fair while now, um, and I've done it out of the kayak a lot, but there's not as much leverage as the boat. Mm, so exactly out of the boat, right. I get to swing really hard and see how strong <laughs> they really are. <laughs> Even this afternoon, actually, it has been a good test because we've had a few short bites. We haven't been pants yet, so. Yeah, I was just about to say, have Hold not been well. pants, and we've had a lot of miniature boom come up and uh, have a go, and I've had a lot of little rocket risky critters flown back at me <laughs> from Chris's wild swinging. So uh, we'll see if we can catch the brim, and we'll see if we can stay away from the bullets that he's shooting back at me. So uh, yeah, let's see what the next couple of days have got to bring. I think there's a they're couple of... They might be blackfish. No, they're yeah, brim. They're keep going, keep going, keep going. Now you can stop. Oh, <laughs> dog it. They're tiny little ones. Yeah, they've got little ones there. Let's see if his mate's there. First Forrester Brim. <laughs> oh, I don't got you in the head, man. <laughs> That's like ultimate teamwork in the racks, hey, is being able to know when someone's going to take a swing and dodge the rod. It's gonna be that good having these things, especially these short bites you get when you're in the racks. Everything's real quick. Get him! Oh! <laughs> what was I saying about real quick? Yeah. So typically, do they run like with racks? They'll be like, if the tide's running out, they'll be at the bottom end, but if it's running so, out, um, they'll it, be at the Like, generally, yeah. You, the, if you're fishing quick, you just go and fish the ends of them all. Yeah. Pretty much, because that's the key. An end, a kick, a change, any sort of anything like variation. Same as bass. Right? Anything with yeah. a variation, but and same deal. Head of it, tail of it. That's yeah, the okay. that's the two key spots. But the big old things can sit bloody anywhere. Yeah. Well, like this that. is my one. this is my first ever rack experience. Proper. We'll, we'll, we'll tee up. Proper rack experience. I'm prepared to get. Um, that's why I'm taking you some proper racks. Prepared to get wrecked. I'm not too worried. And it's all on it's all on Bredo's budget, so yeah, exactly. It's <laughs> my loose hers. gear. It's on him. Yeah. Sick. Oh, there is. Like that. See how he jumped out then. <laughs> That's how hard you got to swing. He got it good too. Damn it! That was a. I reckon that was a better fish. Right in there. Just grab on your electric man and pull yourself forward a bit. Damn. See ya. I'm 
Me steam that chai stuff on top then. Yeah, ready? Oh, how you doing? Can you just send it over? Don't worry about it. Wasn't timid, but these are timid. Oh, oh. Minis, miniatures, minions. Yeah, that's pretty much it. There we go. Uh, I expected it to give you a bit more of a wiggle. <laughs> Just overshot by a smidge then, eh? That's why when you're doing these ones, normally it'll come against the current. Yeah, so you can yeah. Just it slows you like down. Yeah. So let's try on the Mudblood two and a half inch grub at the moment on a 20th with a number one. So a nice decent size hook for a good hook set on the fish. In the racks here, you need that bit bigger hook to have the strength to pull really hard if you can. Um, and the 20th is a good all rounder. I can sort of burn it along the top a little bit and drop it back to the fish, or I can just sink it onto a pole or next to the rack and it'll just flutter enough to get that little tail going. And these guys, smash it on the drop. You can't land it if you don't hook it, can you? Yep, that's exactly right. You worry about getting it out. Mm -hmm. After it's done. After you hook it, because if you don't hook it, then what's the point of worrying And then about when you look at it afterwards and go, I could have probably thrown it in a different direction and still caught him, you think you're an idiot. All right, let's see if we can sneak out of here. So I'm just burning a little 80 mil slippery dog here. This is the ebby color. We're just fishing these shallow racks here. Um, I've actually got a bit of 14 pound leader on here. I'm working it quite quick. The tide's running quite fast and I'm skidding it around a lot and burning it around a lot and pausing it between racks. So I'm burning it over racks, pause, just like that. <laughs> and a brim will come up and eat it. And then give it a little tweak. Oh, he's still there. Give it a little tweak. And now I've then... got the plastic on, waiting for you to miss it and then hopefully they come out and burn it. So I'm, I'm skidding it back and going really quick, burning it back to get their attention, pull them out of the rack into a bit more, I guess, there's nothing, you wouldn't be able to call it safe water around racks, but safer water, where I can then, if they do want to commit to it too, want to bite it, um, I can have a little bit more of a chance to pull them out. So that's why I'm running a bit heavier leader, because it is a top water, I'm, because I'm working it quite quick, it's getting their attention, they're not really, it's going over them so quick, the leader doesn't really affect it. So, um, yeah, I've pulled a couple out. Nothing of size yet. Had a couple of good bites from a uh, from a good one, but he didn't commit, and I got a bit scared and struck a bit early. So um, I'm sure I'll connect to a pretty good one soon. It's just when and if I get it out. They're up and just all all over there. Holy, is that on you? Alrighty, I'm just um, I'm just trying to. New leader on, a bit of the old um, X-Link FC, 12 pound uh, on the new Saltega 8 braid. So it's a nice chartreuse braid. You can, um, you can see it really easy amongst all the structure too. So it's a really good bite marker, bite indicator. Uh, it's got a black mark every 10 meters. So if something bites, you'll see that the little black line move, which is really nice. Um, tying that onto the Infeet 67 MML XS. So that's the essentially the designated rack rod that I helped Iowa with when we brought the in-feet range out or the new in-feet range out and it's just an animal in the racks. It's um, it's light enough in the tip you can roll a crankbait, throw a light plastic but it's got so much grunt down low you can really stick it to them to get them out of the nasty stuff so we'll um, we'll tie a new leader on this one, tie a really light bait junkie jig, jig head on it, two and a half inch minnow and we'll burn it across the top and see what eats it. Just like it. That. I'm only giving you one shot, but I correct. Those that one back there was a better fish. For sure it was like that. Like this that. is a good slope yeah. here. So there's no end poles on the racks here and there's a heap of glare right in front of in front of us, so it's really hard to see the rails. It's there's no actual sticks or anything on them, it's just a really long set of rails. But if you watch the tide coming down and take note, there's a couple of distinct ripples. And that's because the rails are only just under the surface, that ripples pretty much the line of your rail and then you've got the big gap in between. Um, it's still quite hard to line up, but at least it gives you a bit of a gauge on where to cast. The, the center of the spot. Yeah, you can cast it down either side 
all day long and if mm. they're not super active they're not coming out but if you can get it in between the poles or in between the rails that's when you're going to get the good bite yeah right here. and what you can make an assumption because there's one just here five line it up five yeah. five kind of thing so you could yeah fair. yeah you, you'll definitely make a mistake here and there but oh yeah it is what it is always, they're always big when you break them off oh that's that must be his little mate that was oh, with him. it didn't work So we've just got the bait junkie pack here. I just got a little uh, little bust off there from a, it was, it was the biggest brim I've ever hooked in the world. Um, but we just, uh, I just got the bait junkie pack here. So we've, um, we've broken the seal on the, uh, on the sticker there. So these stickers, you can take that off and you can stick that onto, onto your tackle box if you want to, wherever you've got it, to say that you've got your 120th number ones in there. But uh, more importantly, if you're in a saltwater environment like we are here, you can take the one out and you can just reseal that pack straight back up, nice and airtight. There's uh, no salt getting in there as long as you don't put a contaminated hook in there. So if you use it for a session, um, wash it off with fresh water, make sure it's clean. Even then, personally, I wouldn't put it back in here because these are brand spanking hooks. So you don't want to uh, take that risk, but you can just put that new one back into the box uh, with your other hooks or uh, make, a, make a new collection of hooks in another, uh, in another box there. But that's a beauty. You can just chuck it back in your, in your bag there and you're uh, ready to roll again. But I just got another 120th number one out here, and um, we're deep in the racks here. I'll probably put a grub on, I think. Chris is using a top order, but I'll um, just got confirmation the grub will be the go. So we'll run a grub. So here we go. I want to pull like a daddy out. So it's getting good time. Good light. Looks good. Big one. Big one coming up. Calling it. And I reckon. Ooh, <laughs> old faithful mud blood. Old faithful mud blood here. Just slip him up here, pull him right out. Into it, son. A good wiggle. Might be a little flatty. I want to say flatfish, but mm. it's staying down like a brim. Mm, a brim. A brim. That's the beauty of brim fishing with 12 pound litre. There's no worries about bust offs. Oh, ah. there, is, there is definitely worries about bust offs. There's no worries about boat flipping, going real hard on them. And then it also gives that little bit of extra insurance knowing that you've got a nice strong hook behind it. So this is the uh, this is the 2X BKK on this one here. I uh, gave this little brim boss a C and 2. He didn't have much, um, much time to get back in. So um, just confidence. And with fishing, confidence is 90% of it. Come on. I just stop halfway through that because it doesn't have weed on it. Oh, that's a good one. There you go. Ah, yeah, biggest of the day. See how much easier it comes in? Look how we ate that too. Ate it. That's the juice. That's one of the uh, big ones for the afternoon. Got a big buff head on him. Look at that little little tinge of blue on his nose there. But um. Bait junkie grub, absolutely submerged down in his guts there. That's a, uh, he's no he's no big one by any means, but my biggest for the Arvo. So we'll get this one out. They're just so green when they come in the boat when they don't have any drag to pull off a reel, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> or time to fight. Yeah, they um very green. But exactly how you want it. The old, don't want to put my fingers in there either, but look at that. Beauty. Very good. Oh yeah. Brimos on the bait junkie. Ooh. Back he goes. Alright, that's the probably the end of the rack fish for the afternoon. We're just gonna pop over onto the natural bank. The um the low light slide them down. Low tide, they're not chewing as good as they were, especially on the top water. Um, but it's been a fun afternoon, hmm. a little bit. At least we've got a bit of an idea what we're going to do for tomorrow now. Yeah, first day out on, uh, or first time out on Foster, and I'm blown away. Like, there's bait everywhere. There's a lot more structure and a lot more racks than uh, than I ever imagined. I thought that 
when um, when people fish the racks, it was just one kind of area, but it's literally just the whole river. <laughs> so there's no shortage of it's racks. Everything. Yeah, literally everything. But um, yeah, we'll call that a day. A couple of fish, so can't complain. I'm really looking forward to tomorrow. I think, Indeed. Yeah, tomorrow's going to be really, really fun. I'm looking forward to it a lot. See you in the morning, mate. Yeah, man, we'll see you in the morning. I was just saying. Did you say you had to come to real water? So the tide might outsmart us a little bit too. And we're live. We are at Foster this morning. Um, we had a little little run yesterday. We're just down at the mouth at the moment. We had a quick go for a dewy, no luck yet. Um, the tide just changed, so we're gonna go upstream now. We're gonna get stuck into some big brim. Hopefully we can uh, extract some big ones from the racks today. We, following on from yesterday, I guess we got a bit of an idea of, of what they're doing and where they are. Um, nothing crazy, but hopefully we can get some size today. Not too worried about numbers. But um, yeah, we're just gonna work our way up with the tide. Chris has got a couple of little honey holes that we're gonna go and hit and um, we're going to put the bait junkie jig heads through the paces today and um, hopefully get some good specimens into the boat so let's see how we go yeah fingers crossed there's um there's always plenty out there but not not my favorite time of year to fish oyster mm. racks themselves with plastics but i reckon we've got a few little tips to rig them the right way to still catch them in the summertime so fingers crossed they want to play the game and we can cause some action yeah we're into it let's go i am at the minute installing a 120th of an ounce number one um, two times stronger hook on this one the heavy wire because we just pulled up to the racks this is the first little drift for the morning so um, we've got leaders on everything but i'm just going to go through and spend a bit of time getting a couple of rods rigged up here got 120th on this one um, we got 130th on a uh, like a 7.3 that i'm going to use i'm probably going to put a 116th on as well have a probably a risky curter and some grubs or something like that. The 130th will have a grub to skip over the top of the racks, top water, and then drop it back down. Um, sounds like Chris has just got a bit of an inquiry, so, um, but number one done. So I'll probably put them on the deck. Chris will get busted off, pick it up. I'll do the next one, and it'll just be a vicious cycle of me retying all day. <laughs> sounds good. <laughs> fish for the day. That's the first one in the morning for us. To be honest, he's probably not a bad brim. He's uh, he's dinner plate ready size, but he um, he's gonna get a go. Look at the nice colors on that. Definitely big, not um, green, are they? No. Yeah. Big buff head on him, eh, for like such a small body. Pretty cool, but he's wanted to go back, so a slipper away. This has got to be bust off territory. Part of me just wants to hurl it over that right now. Brim. It's pretty, pretty much gimme, wasn't it? Yes. Kind of knew that was going to happen. The current rolling over that. There's big Timmy's down there. Yeah, I can. He's just. Should chilling we go out. in and have a wrestle? Yeah, or I just we lose can. it. Yeah, we could probably go in and just chill there and try and pole him. So I've just picked up a plastic. I see Chris getting a few a few nibbles on the plastic. So I've got a 120th um, 120th little minnow on here, two and a half inch minnow. But the rod I'm using here, it's quite a short rod. It doesn't have much length because we're not we're not going for distance here. We're just going for accuracy up against it. But more importantly, this has got a bit of backbone. This is the six uh, six four one <clears throat> LFS in the in feet Z range. 
So it is really short, but it's just got balls. This I use this rod for um, throwing frogs, like kicky curlies and stuff, for bass in the rivers. Um, I've got a 3,000 frames on this. This is um, 0.8 PE of the new Saltiga 8. So I think that's uh, roughly about 15 pound or so. Um, but I'm using a 3,000 just because it's got a little bit more, uh, I guess, power and torque. Um, it might look a little bit out of place on this rod, but for the purpose, it's, uh, it's fit for it. So I wanna make sure that I can, um, I can pull the fish out with it. So a bit of 12 pound leader, 0.8 PE, in feet Z, 6.4, 3,000 reel, and a little minnow. I've got Chris's least favorite brim color on. <laughs> So we'll see, we'll see what, uh, if it works or not, but um, yeah, we've seen a couple on this inside rack, so fingers crossed we can go and get a, uh, a big one off her. Oh, a better one. And gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're done. <laughs> That was like the smallest brim that just got wrapped around like the one bit. So we'll go for a wander out towards um, out towards the lake a bit further and find some more nasty racks and see how we go. It's crazy there's no rolling, which is, with this tide, you know, oh, that was a big one. If he eats that, I'm going to stripes. Oh, no, it wasn't. It's only a little one. It was a good shine. So a lot of the time when I'm fishing the racks with the plastic, there's a couple of different ways you can do it to get their attention. You can either burn it along the top and hopefully get them to see it and drop it back to them. Um, but other times you just want to drop it right next to the rack straight away and leave it there. The key is to keep an eye on your line too. You haven't got much room to play with here. Oh, like that. That's a better one. That's a decent one. Look at that. Hey. There we go. Don't worry about me little talk to camera. Now we're cooking with some gas. Show me. I want to see it. Yeah, nice. That's he more like it. That. He played with that for a while then, to be fair. Woo! First decent racker. He, um... See the agility like, of that short rod? Yeah, he was just like... He was nibbling at it, nibbling at it, and then I saw it, like, move off, and I'm just like, oh, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> He's, I'm going it. He's not a monster monster. But that's the biggest for the week, uh, for the trip for me so far. Not bad, Look, at a, at a push, I'll get about a 36 forker. Building. So you want to try and keep these things as straight as possible, which isn't the easiest task on the critter because it's a pretty long, thin bait. But you're better off having a bit less hook than too much hook. So that's a pretty good length. And just pinch the front, drag it up over that keeper. And away you go. Don't forget to split the tails. Just made a little top water change up here. Getting a lot of bites on the 80 mil slippery dog, but I've just gone to a 65 because much like myself, the room have got commitment issues today. So we're um, just swapping out to a 65, but these slippery dogs don't come with a split ring or um, or like an oval ring or anything at the front of them. So I'm just doing a, a loop knot here. So I've done a granny knot, which you can see at the front here in the main line, and then you put it through the eye of the hook, and then you run, as you can see, you run the line back through that granny knot that you made. You wrap it around four to six times, depending on what size leader you have, and then you just go straight back through that granny knot, pull it down slightly, not to cinch, and then give it a little bit of moisture. Don't if you pull the main line, it'll make the loop, the main loop knot longer, where if you pull the tag end slowly and bind it down, that's when it, it just keeps the loop the same size. So to make a really compact loop knot, just work it down slowly. And if you want, you can push, the, you can push it in a little bit as well, the knot, and give her, a, give her a little cinch and pull. And we've got a nice little compact loop knot there. On a, uh, on a Slippery Dog 65, so it's got full movement, so I can get maximum action out of the lure. Alrighty, we've just come down the front into some clear water, um, just in among some racks with a lot of flats and that. I'm not gonna try and catch a big flatty on a 6.2 bait junkie minnow. 
Um, these have been pretty successful for us recently. Just on a quarter ounce head, the current's running really hard here, so you do need a little bit of weight to get it down. There's a, there's a bit of a trick to rigging these things. I like to run it with a, a split ring, swivel, split ring, and then a treble at the back. Uh, just because those big mouths on those flatties tend to have a, a hook slide out and they clamp down so hard, um, if you don't get a really good strike on them, you, they sort of bounce out. So that's how I like to rig them. Um, little glow bead up in there just to stop that split ring coming off. Slow roll along the bottom here and I reckon we're in with a chance. This is cool. Hopefully I can catch a nice big one in here. If I can make a better cast. Yeah. Oh, there he is. A oh, little one. On the big hook too. He's thinking that was his breakfast lunch ending. I'm thinking there's a treble swing around there that's going to get me in the hand. There he's. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> I just saw that little fish come out and eat that then. Oh, how cool is that? That was sick, eh? He was like out Swam like that, that one little Pop like it. hole in the yep. weed. Woof, come on, pull out. There we go. Not a bad little lizard. Bit of a warm up anyway. We've been fishing flathead for literally seven and a half minutes. Chris has caught two. One just then that, yeah, getting to be an all right size. The average Joe would be pretty stoked with that on a, uh, on a bigger swim bait. So I'm going to fish out a heavier bass rod now and I uh, pinch Chris's other pre rigged baddie here and I'm going to get in on some action as well. There he is. That's a better one. Oh, not big, but better. Where am I going here, old mate? You reckon straight through will be right? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> you got him. Got him off that one, he's back around it now. Right, I'm gonna run straight through on this. Yeah. That got him. Might need the glove for that one. Do you want the net or the? Nah, just the glove, I'll just grab him. Missed him with the front hook, but. I feel like I could work with my right hand. <laughs> Should be able to just grab him in. Oh, that's so close to coming oh. out like that. I was just about to say. It's all right. We'll get a big one. I'm going to get a reel. <laughs> just grab that other rod. It's rigged. It's rigged again. Yeah, but I want to use bait cast now. Ah, oh, yes. It is much more fun with the bait cast. Yeah, look at that. The hooks popped through a couple of times. Ow. Hooked, like, popped out of the plastic when they've been shaken on it, but has not moved off the keeper. Like, not one bit. That's three in a row. Decent fish. Hasn't shifted. Yeah, so we're just throwing the big 6.2 bait junkie minnow on a quarter ounce bait junkie head at the moment. Rigged up with that treble. Throwing it up current and pretty much just winding up the slack, letting the current do most of the work. Um, it's only between a foot to two and a half, three feet deep here. Um, and there's sort of little pressure points and, and weed pockets and humps that the flatties like to sit in behind. So that little bit of weight in this current helps it just keep with the contour and right in that flathead's face. So it's just Basically, chuck it out, slow roll back, and um, cover as much ground as you can because the big ones in this current don't like to move too far from where they are. Uh, so a decent sized cast, not too far because if you're too far away, then there's too much stuff in the road. And then the edge is a slow old roll back in and wait for that clunk. Oh, what that? Oh, that's a good one. Oh, that's a big one. Oh, get out. Oh, shit. Well, that's all bad. Oh, that's a tank, that thing. Wow. I don't know how I'm going to get this. Oh, I'm in all sorts. Ah! Golly gosh, eh? Well, let me know when you need a, um, when you need a bloke to grab him. That's a big one. A good one, anyway. How long can I do it? How long can I fight him around those poles? He's up there somewhere at the moment. Hopefully yep. he gets tired. And what size do you reckon? Um, he'd be in the 80s, I reckon. Holy, it'd be nice if he stopped. He's going hard. Oh, taking so much line. Stop going that way. Come back. Even Brim come back. The other part that just like amazes me is that we're just like, oh, we're gonna go for a quick flatty fish. There's literally boats everywhere. 
It's crystal clear. Chris has hooked like four fish and they're like, this is like a good one. That's what's just blowing my mind at the minute. I don't think I'm gonna get around that last pole's in and he's I can feel the braid's kind of caught on it. Yeah. Well, I can't even see where he's uh oh that jammed up his oh, then. He's, oh there he is there. He's yeah. at the base of that one. Yeah, he's way in there. Still got heaps of line to get back yet. There's a big old gar in front of him. Nah, but what's he's happened? I think there. he's gone around. Oh, he's done that. Yeah. There he, he's just in front of it now. Maybe. Maybe we're right. Hopefully. He comes around that. There, oh, he is a good fish, man. Yeah, I know. Yeah, there we go. Go rip. You got him? Yeah, you got him. All right, let's do take two on the old glove here. That's a big one. Left. Okay, he's got that hook all right. Probably should add a net. Yeah, look, Oof. probably. Might Come need two hands now. there, son. Right, eh? Ready? <laughs> yeah, you're good. Oh, yeah, he pulled down good. <laughs> Yeet! <laughs> How's that? You kidding? <laughs> <laughs> that is a hog. That's a hog. <laughs> I wasn't gentle with a big girl, but no one will lift it too high. That's a, that's a fair sized chunk of lizard, that thing. Um, it's not the longest I've seen, but it's really, really girthy, good, healthy fish. Just smoke that bait, Junkie. It's so much fun catching these things. Right in the corner of the mouth. I think I've had this thing in the boat for many years and it's only been unrolled a couple of times. Let's see what the damage is on a I reckon it's in the 90s, surely. What do we got? 96-ish. 96, 96, 97? 97, yeah, just, well, yeah, 97, pretty good. Better fish. Better known as 38 inches. <laughs> <laughs> Still, That's, shows you how big a croc it's got to be to be a metre. That is like phenomenal. I it's got to like, be a big fish. I'll just get this thing out so it doesn't. Yeah. Find her little sandy spot, chill out. It even looks big on the bottom. Cool! Let's do it again! I'm not here yet, still pumping. I don't hold on for dear life. I need to do in between the racks. There he is, the rack. That's a rack. Oh god, I like it. I didn't realise there's racks there. I reckon your leader bumped that first, eh? Hey? Yeah. The leader not bumped over. Because it went like gunk and I'm like, yeah. oh. Because I watched the tick, I thought you were. Oh, I got it. Exactly. I'll start the motor and help us out. So I'm just targeting the sandy patches uh, where it's a bit of a current break where the flatties can sit and feed on the top of this tide. I think they sort of set up waiting for that run out and the food to come to them. So they can pretty much sit anywhere in here and quite often they'll be in the deeper parts. But if you do find one up on the shallow water, it normally means it's feeding. So instead of just spending heaps of time fishing everything, we're just trying to fish some key little spots um, there's so much air in this place, you can literally catch them on any of it. You just gotta keep poking around, fish quick until you find the right spot and hopefully get them. Looks good. Feels Wait for good. Braden to have a turn now. Mm. Yeah, I'm ready. Just put me on him, mate. Champ. Well, I thought we'd get him here. I'll have a quick Oh, there she goes. Have to have that many. What's that? Just took off, just there. Oh, His really? dog. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Threw over its head, wasn't gonna eat. How many? Maybe five or six flatted, I think it was just then, something like that. Something like that. It was, um, and they were all in one spot, like bang, 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 bang. Chris bloody killed it. I was too late to the party, but that's all right. We'll probably end up going back there, I'd say, just at the top of the tide. The current's still running in pretty hardcore, so we'll go and get something to eat now. We'll go and find a little cafe on the water somewhere or something and get a feed, and then we'll come back out for the top of the tide. And then, probably more brims. Go to the racks. Yeah, with any luck and catch some more big brims. We'll catch some big brims, I guess. <laughs> that is a fish. Oh, yes. oh no. You got him on. Oh. <laughs> got him. It makes you amazed I've got that over there. Oh, good healthy little fish too. I'll get him back in and get a bigger one, I reckon. Slow rolled motor oil minnow, that one. 
on in a big way there with that one sacrifice. We've we've got more sacrifices there. They eat them when they eat it. They're eating them like pretty good. The hookup's awesome. Oh, it's just no. so little. Anyway. Oh, that's a bit better. Yeah, we're starting to get somewhere, Chris. Bloodworm minnow. Decent. Alrighty, we might um, call it a day on this one. It's been a it's been a fun day. A bit challenging at times. It was pretty calm this morning, and now it's super windy this afternoon. We didn't have much in between, but caught a few decent fish. Braden got his first decent one out of the racks. Mm. Got a nice big flathead on the 6.2 bait junkie minnow, um, and really put the bait junkie jig heads to the test. I don't think we, I don't think we got pantsed by a fish all day on any plastic, and no. that's like a genuine truth as yeah, well. Yeah, no super glue, no super glue, no like fixing up of plastics. It was just a, uh, it was a good day catching fish out of the racks. A little bit slow, but it was enough to kind of keep us going and keep us grinding. That flathead was, oh, oh. <laughs> That's good fun. That I was like, like the pinnacle. I still can't believe how big that thing was. So yeah, it was good day. Cool. Yeah, good day. And um, we'll go home and wash up and think of the next adventure, right? Eh? Definitely. Thank you.